Yeah, it was only like 2017, 2018 when the Hardy Boys came back. Wow, I feel old. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time I've ever watched it through all the way. It was like a WrestleMania party and it was incredible. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I haven't watched one all the way through live before. Right. I'm now going to get like all the heat. <laughs> 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 That's quite amazing, to be honest with you. To be able to say that, I mean, like, <clears throat> I, I, to be honest with you, um, although, my, like, my my one, just for Jack Jack gives us his, but my one, um, I'm trying to think of this now, WrestleMania 10. That is when I started, um, wow. which makes me feel like a granddad on here at the moment. But that was my, <laughs> <laughs> that was my first one, and... To be honest with you, I go up to about, I'd say, 21, and the rest, they all feel the same. Um, and I don't know if that's just because of, like, my age, or if it's just the case that, like, production-wise, everything got to a certain standard, and it all kind of looks the same now. Whereas back in the very early ones, you could really distinguish and identify with which WrestleMania was which. They all had a certain look and like the logos and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, WrestleMania 10 is mine. How about for you, Jack? Uh, well, okay. The the first, it wasn't live, but the first WrestleMania I ever watched was WrestleMania 2000. Right. Which, like, you're talking about, like, trying to get everyone on the card. Mm-hmm. That yeah. I only had one single match on that card, and that was uh, <laughs> the, the cat fight between uh, Ronald. <laughs> And the cat. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I found it. I just found it like I found it like amazing. It was a really like in hindsight, like looking back compared to all like, the other WrestleManias I've seen since then. It's a really, it's a really poor WrestleMania in comparison. Mm-hmm. But it was like, oh, it was like amazing because that was like peak of the Attitude Era, which mm-hmm. like was or or like one of the peaks of the Attitude Era, and it was just like, ah, oh, it's just amazing. Get to see. Um, uh, like the triangle ladder match, mm-hmm. the triangle ladder match that was like my favorite on the show before TLC came along and smashed that, smashed the whole yeah. genre that out of the park. And then I've been really, really, I've had really, really bad luck with live watch trying to watch it live. So, like, the first portion of live WrestleMania I saw was like the back end of WrestleMania 30, right. So, because like I, I was uh, I was out drinking, and uh, for some reason, like Ridies were showing it, and we didn't get like down in South End, and like, didn't didn't get in until like gone three o'clock. So we saw, we managed to see Brock versus Undertaker. The streak ending, yeah. That we walked, we walked into that match starting, right. And then that was our uh, like after after the result happened, like Riley just went silent. It yeah, just, it went it went <laughs> silent. It didn't pick up again until Daniel Bryan came out for the triple threat mm-hmm. for when mm-hmm. he won the title. Yeah. So yeah, then, that was. Uh... Oh, that was that was like m- momentous, mm. momentous. Yeah, if that's even a word. <laughs> we're making up we'll do it um and then like next year went to the same riders again it had like a group of us because we want to see right wrestlemania because it was wrestlemania 31 yeah and uh as the first match was the ladder match for the intercontinental title and just as uh, i think it might have been daniel bryan coming out making his entrance the feed cut Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, and like <laughs> sat there for an hour while the manager's trying to get this feedback, and it just, it just didn't happen. So like, we couldn't even watch that WrestleMania all the way through. Wow, I can't imagine what the reaction was after that. Then, ah, <laughs> uh, livid, livid. So, like, I stayed up all day, yeah. just stayed up all day, and like we were hanging out at Riley's just to, <laughs> just to watch WrestleMania, and then like the feed cut, and it's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> the worst yeah wow that's, it, uh, that's shocking i made the decision then to to like stay at home mm-hmm. <laughs> just stay at home and watch it on the network <laughs> yeah uh well that's that's crazy um i wouldn't have liked to have been the owner that night 
Um, with the kind of feedback he would have got, but uh, that's uh, that's the worst possible look. Right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna run down some of the matches on the card. I'm gonna ask you both for a little bit of early predictions um, okay. on this one. That is a is a heavy card. So we have got Edge and Randy Orton, last man standing match. Um, like I've I, I've said this before. This is probably the most um, enjoyable sort of run up to WrestleMania. I've enjoyed these two. Like out of this year's WrestleMania, I've just enjoyed. Um, a lot of what's been going on along like the storyline, just because they've mixed a little bit of reality with it and blurred the lines a little bit. And obviously you got the return of edge as well in that. So um, how has this been for you? Like, first of all, I'll, I'll go with um, Alyssa. Like who have you got? And are you an edge or an Orton fan in particular? Uh, definitely an edge fan. Mm-hmm. I'd like to say, I hope this is his rubber match. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure though. I, I could see them going like Randy Orton. What is it, Legend Killer? Legend Killer, yeah. Yeah, that I was could the see, old. Uh... I could see them like going with Orton, mm-hmm. just to kind of break everyone's hearts. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, I'm hoping for Edge. What about what about for you, Jack? Uh, I'm I'm hoping it'll be Edge, just because like. I feel like what a what a feel good moment, and like I think I think this WrestleMania is like set up to be like feel good moments all around. But mm-hmm. I, I really want it. I really want it to be edge. Yeah, it's simply because like it's tremendous that he even he he's getting back in the ring to begin with mm-hmm. after after like what happened with like his neck and the surgeries, and like what a downer it'd be like his first proper match back. He's Losing to Randy Orton, which is like a great talent. Love Randy Orton, but uh, he, yeah, I, I can't see it being that much of a downer. I, I yeah, I got to give it to Edge. Yeah, a lot of my listeners they've been emailing me in about uh, this particular match just because I think of all the matches that are booked at WrestleMania, this is the one that seems to concern everybody. Not having fans there for it. Just that whole, like, the way WWE, the presentation of a last man standing is very much, you know, uh, two men are out for a long while sitting down and then there's a count going on. And whether it will have the same impact without having nobody there. Like, for you personally, if you was involved in this match as as a performer, would this, would this, would you get around that easy, do you think? Or, Or is that a little bit of a burden not to have the kind of reaction from people or people feeding into what you're doing? Not on the WWE pay scale. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good answer. If I was a superstar, I don't think it would bother me too much. Mm-hmm. At the level we're at, it would it would probably bum me out, and maybe I wouldn't do want to do as much. But I'd still probably do it anyway. Mm-hmm. I feel a bit bad for Edge. Like your first proper match back. At- there's no one there for your WrestleMania moment, but yeah, I suppose that's why like Orton's like the legend killer because you know it's kind of like a screw you, Edge. You are not getting your moment, no matter what. Okay, so yeah, no, prediction. There's definitely gonna be Orton. There. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. That's cemented it now. You've like almost talked yourself into that even more now. So. It's the- for me, for me, I just think with there being no fans, I would love it if they just just teared up the whole performance center mm-hmm. because, Good like, face, they ain't got to worry about like fans getting in the way or like mm-hmm. or getting getting sued or whatever. I'd love it. Like, do you ever do you ever watch um do you ever watch uh, Terry Funk, uh, Jerry Lauder in that MT arena? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, like, I, yeah. That's I, a great I, match. I'd want it to be. I'd want it to be like that, where it's just like, just they're just chatting, sh- chatting silly shizzle to each other, <laughs> and and just like throwing each other around and just beating, beating mm-hmm. each other up, and like just just going hell for leather for it. Because why not? Yeah. Why yeah. not? You got, all, you got all that space. Like, get creative with it. I feel like this WrestleMania is very. They they're trying to be very creative. I think they've got to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to recommend actually people check that out. If you haven't already, you can probably get out on YouTube. Like um, Jerry Lawler, um, that that was just such a good thing. I forgot like what sort of year that would have been in. 
But I think I think it was seventy nine. Okay, think, yeah, that's I, that's probably on YouTube somewhere. Check that out. But you know what? You saying that there was this other version of like a, a match, it, nowhere near to the class of that. But if anybody remembers the Slammies in nineteen eighty seven, that flipping fiasco between I think it was Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And somebody else where they, they just like, have you ever seen the Slammies 87? Uh, all the way through on the network. Uh, I've not. Is that, the one, is that the one where, uh, is that the one where like, uh, didn't, didn't stand back and. Yeah, that one. You got like Jake Mushman <laughs> and Hulk Hogan. Like, They're all off. singing at the end of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the most surreal experience of my life watching that. Um, it really was watching Bret Hart sing and. Like everyone's really into it, and yeah, they, but they, in the middle of it, there's this brawl going on, and the camera just keeps cutting to it, like backstage every now and then, and it's just the most funniest thing to watch. It's just it's it's, it's so bad that it's good. Um, so yeah, if you want to cheer yourself up and watch another version of that, go to the Slammys 19, 1987. It's like it was like Vince McMahon trying to do his version of the Oscars in a way um, at these Slammy Awards because I, I believe they even had like a red carpet fiasco um before they got in and stuff so so it's worth checking out um i don't i'd also recommend um uh the rock versus mankind from night yeah heat yeah yep. that was cool yeah i won't i won't spoil the uh the finish if Nas watched it but it's yeah. uh it's entertaining for sure yeah um okay next match we've got uh king uh corbin um who of course last year like he done the big the big thing that it seems so long ago now, but he ended Kurt Angle on the retirement uh, match and all the rest of it. He's up against Elias. It's a singles match. Um, it's not sort of like jumping off at me at the page, but um, Baron Corbin, like if there was an audience there, he's normally one of the few people that gets genuine heat, I would say, from main, like adults as well as kids. Uh, but he's against the Lice, who for a change has actually got a match this year, which is good because normally he's doing some sort of stick on the on the um, guitar or, you know, he's doing like a 10, 10 second segment with like a rock or a scene or something. So it's good that he's he's got a match. Um, I mean, <clears throat> there's not a lot to gain in this, I don't feel, for for either guy. So this is why it doesn't really appeal to me that much. But um, as, as a match itself, like thrown together, like does this do it for you or? It's like a good uh, bit of chemistry here, but so yeah, I'm a fan. yeah, Liz is a big fan of both. Mm. I'm a <laughs> pair of them. I do think mm. these these two are probably maybe two of the good examples of people that were built in the PC that maybe might struggle with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially like their characters. Are yeah, pretty, two of the biggest characters that mm-hmm. are built with purely crowd reaction. Yeah. So I think it might be a bit of a deer in the headlights moment. But I think, regardless, it should still be entertaining. I'm a fan. I like them. Got to win, though. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you, want to, you want them both to win? I do. <laughs> Draw. That's Why what we're going for here. Yeah. Go for, for no, a double I'm count gonna out. I'm going to go like a DQ kind of situation. <laughs> go double count out, rule to the back. The gym. <laughs> Uh, see, like I, I like, I like Elias. I like, I like Elias. He's he's very he's very entertaining. But I gotta say, they're like they're still big on Corbin. They're still like WWE still big on King Corbin. So I reckon they'll they'll give him the win because like he he got destroyed by Roman Reigns mm-hmm. uh, on like on like the big shows for like mm-hmm. the past. Months. So I reckon I reckon he needs like they'll give him a win back, build him build him yeah. back up to uh, if not give him a title like maybe so so that he can he can feud with like another upper mid card mm-hmm. um, cusp on main event star. Mm-hmm. I don't know who be, though. But, yeah, him. yeah, 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 yeah. Him I and Edge. Yeah, that's a good pick, to be fair. Um, okay, now we've got the Intercontinental Championship match. Sami Zayn, um, who, uh, according to this, is going to be going in with having the backup of Cesaro and Nakamura up against Daniel Bryan, who's going to be with uh, Drew Gulak. Like, it's, this is a, a, a pretty decent um, sort of combination of these two guys going at it. Um, 
And uh, obviously for the Intercontinental 